Hey! Always getting into trouble. <sighs> Captain Hamara. Talk here doesn't start shit without a real good reason. And that means it was you. You dumbasses jumped the wrong guy. Uh, no. Uh, you know this guy's like a son to the Matsugani patriarch, right? Uh, know what I'm trying to say, asshole? Hey, come on, Cap. Can't we just let it be? No can do. This right here just became a matter of Matsugane family honor. I'm sorry! <laughs> Kengo, you haven't met our buddy Tak here, have you? He's a guy you want to know. Hotshot detective type. Right. It's good to meet you. The boss paid his way through law school back in the day. Made him into a damn good attorney. Guy even managed to get a bona fide serial killer off the hook. Seriously? Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> right? Damn shame seeing talent like that go to waste. Huh, totally! <laughs> get this, though. The first thing that killer did when he got loose? Stabbed his girlfriend to death. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> yep. Guy got the death penalty and everything. They get around to hanging his ass, talk. Not yet, no. Oh, what the hell's taking him so long? Here. This is the money from that detective. The rest is yours. I already took my cut. Good. You're finally getting the hang of this whole debt collecting thing. Yeah, thanks to you. Hmm. Anyway, how's Kaito? Fine. You mind asking him something? How long is he gonna stick around? Not wise to stay in town after you get kicked out of the family. But, uh... I can look the other way, since the boss likes you so much. Speaking of, how's Matsugane-san doing? None of your damn business, I'd say. Come on, let's go. Here's a familiar face. Kyohei Hamura, from the Matsugane family. I ran into him earlier, actually. Take it he's your client? Yep. Got hauled in earlier. They're charging him with murder. Seriously? Seriously. So, the Matsugane Patriarch came to us for his defense. Genda Sensei is the go to guy for all his legal problems, you know? How'd you end up in the driver's seat then? Genda Sensei gave him my card. Gotta say, not looking forward to defending a Yakuza. Tough luck, I guess. Anyway, you're coming with me to the station. Need to have a word with Hamura. You got way more Yakuza experience than me, after all. I yeah, suppose I do. Let me give you a rundown of the case first. The victim was a Yakuza. A Kansai guy. Part of the Kyori clan. They found his body tossed in a dumpster just about a week ago. Hold on. This is... The guy who got his eyes gouged out? Yep. Cops think Hammer is the one who did it. Hell of a case, man. This is the third Yakuza they've found like this. Fortunately, we're not dealing with a triple homicide here. So the media isn't swarming. Hmm? Hammer's got an alibi for the first two incidents. His third murder is the only one they're pinning on him. So they won't admit the cases are connected? No. Makes sense. 
three bodies and not a single suspect isn't exactly giving the cops credibility. Guess they just want to get this case closed and move on, even if they have to force it through. And hey, the victim was Yakuza. Nobody really cares who hangs for it. Why'd they come after Hamura, of all people? Two reasons. First, the victim was a Kansai Yakuza from a group that's been making inroads in Kamurocho and picking fights with the Tojo clan along the way. Odds are, this was a Tojo guy wanting to send a message. And as you know, Hamura fits the bill. And the other reason? Hamura and the victim were seen having a fight on the day of the crime. I'm guessing there's security camera footage then. Has Hamura said anything to you? Yeah. He told me he didn't do it. Claimed the cops were falsely accusing him. So he insists he's innocent, huh? I think I know enough. We should get to the station. You go on ahead. I got some calls to make first. Just take a cab there. Will do. We just keep running into each other tonight, eh, hey, Doc? Why the long face? Hamura-san. Uh, I'm Shintani from the Genda Law Office. The Matsugane family asked us to represent you. Then I'm glad you said yes, Shintani-sensei. We're gonna get along real good. Just like my boss and Genda-sensei. Uh, right. Well, let's get started. I'll be taking point, while Yagami here will be doing the legwork to try and back up your claims. No better guy to do it. I'll do what I can. So, they brought you in under suspicion of murder. Can you tell me more about that? Huh? What do you want to know? Whether or not you killed the guy. Does it really matter? Your job's getting me out of this mess, regardless of the truth. No. Because if I find out you actually did it... You'll drop me? Better. I'll make sure the prosecution puts you away for life. This is bullshit! Just like you did that serial killer, huh? Uh, Yagami? All the evidence at the time pointed to Shinpei Okubo being innocent. That's why I chose to trust him. But then, that Okobo guy, well, he proved us all wrong. Murdered his girlfriend in cold blood. Come on, Tuck. Let's be honest about what you were really focused on at the time. You wanted that precious acquittal so bad, you didn't even stop to think you were setting a murderer loose, right? What happened to innocent until proven guilty? Try saying that to Emi Terasawa's parents. That's why you quit, right? You couldn't face him. <clears throat> you think, um, we could maybe get back to the case? Sure. Why not? You good to go? I'm fine. Keep going. My apologies. Now, <clears throat> let's start with the victim. Toshiro Kume, 34 at his time of death. A member of the Kansai-based Kyori clan. Around 6 a.m. on the 4th of December, the police got a 110 call from someone who found his corpse in a pile of garbage. I hear you and this Kume had some kind of argument before he died. Yep. Did the police say what evidence points to you being the killer? Do they have anything substantial? Nope. Bastards are keeping their lips sealed. Ain't that right, Shintani-sensei? Yes. At this point in the investigation, the cops won't tell me what they've got against you. 
Your words are the only thing we'll have till the trial. Tuh. <laughs> is what it is. Anything else you want to ask, Yagami? Where did you and Kume have your fight? Out in front of a club, Amor, over on Supon Street. Me and a few Matsugani boys had a little run-in with a Kiori guy. Turns out that was your boy, Kume. And who started the fight? Who do you think? I'm not gonna let some Kansai punk strut around like he owns the place. I'd already thrown a few drinks back at that point, too. What time did this all go down? Just past nine. So what happened after you and Kume had your standoff? Went your separate ways? Nah, he tried to split, but I had my boys grab him. Dragged him into a moor. What? I... I thought it was just a little scuffle, though. You're saying you abducted Kume on a crowded public street? Yep, Amor is one of the family businesses. So I went in, kicked the customers out, and kicked the crap out of Kume. But I'm telling you, I didn't kill the guy. Just tossed him out the back door when I was done with him. I left right after, too. A few minutes before midnight. Uh-huh. So you were seen dragging Kume into the club, and he was found in the morning with his eyes gouged out. <laughs> I'd arrest you too if I was a cop. What do we have on the victim? Toshiro Kume, 34. Run of the Melchiori grunt. Was Kume alone when you ran into him? Hard to believe he'd take that kind of risk in hostile territory. It was him and one more. Probably another Kure asshole. Don't know his name, though. So there were two of them, and how many of you? I'd say there was probably five, including me. Why didn't you guys take Kume's friend in, too? <laughs> we tried. Bastard ran like the goddamn wind, though. You have an alibi? What time did they think Kume died? Apparently, between two and three in the morning. The cops were drilling me real hard about where I was around then. And? Where were you? At a sauna. A spot called Sauna Goten. Spent the night getting a steam. But there's no proof you were actually there, huh? Well, otherwise you wouldn't be in here. Pretty much. Someone should have seen something, though. I think I've heard enough for now. We'll get going, then. And this is Hamura, captain of the Matsugane family. Did he come in on the night of the crime? I'll tell you the same thing I told the cops. This is the guy. Name's Hamura. I can't say I know him. There's tons of Yakuza around here. Kume's the poor bastard getting dragged into the club. Explains why Kume's buddy there is running for his life. Yep. Got a name, too. Akira Murase. Another Kyori thug. Word is, he hasn't left Kamurocho after getting interrogated by the cops. By the look of things, there must be a Curie hideout nearby. Crazy how clear it all is. Hamura can't just talk his way out of this. December 3rd, just around 9 o'clock. Right out front of Club Amor. An argument breaks out between Captain Hamura of the Matsugane family and Kume and Murase of the Kyore clan. Hamura and his thugs drag Kume into the club. 
at which point Murase abandons Kume and flees the scene. Hummer then locks Kume in a moor for around an hour, while he and his boys beat the daylights out of the guy. Around 10 p.m., Hummer kicks everyone out, leaving only himself and Kume in the club. Up to that point, their story matches the camera footage and the testimony we have from the owner of Amor. The prosecution story continues as follows. Once the two of them were alone, Hamura tortured Kume even more violently. Then, between 2 and 3 a.m., he drove a sharp weapon into Kume's eye, killing him instantly. Once he finished gouging Kume's eyes out, Hamura dumped the body in the alley behind Amor. If you're telling the truth, that's a clear contradiction. Huh. Who gives a shit what the prosecution says? When the fuck am I getting out of here, Tuck? Don't ask me. Shintani Sensei's your lawyer, remember? Hamura-san, I've got something to show you. December 3rd, 11.55 p.m. A Kyore man by the name of Murase comes to Amor to rescue Kume. Not wanting to be seen by the cameras, he goes in through the back. And? Murase said there wasn't a soul in sight. Well, yeah, I'd already hopped over to the sauna. And what did you do with Kume? I already told you I threw him out the back. And before that? Huh? Around 10 o'clock, you kicked everyone else out so you could be alone with Kume. I have testimony to back that up. Why'd you do it, though? What can I say? I guess Kume reminded me of an old friend. I must have been feeling nostalgic. Who knows, though? I was pretty plastered. That's so. Did you need to kick everyone out just for that? Uh, I told you I was drunk. Who knows what I was thinking? Well, you seem to remember other parts clearly, though. Like when you left the club. What are you getting at? For a so-called innocent man with an alibi, your story has an awful lot of holes. Oh, yeah? You wouldn't hide something from us, would you? Of course not. Something like... the true killer's identity? I said I'm not hiding shit! Now get the hell out there and prove my alibi! I was at the sauna all night long! Prove that and I'm in the clear! I need to have a backup plan in case your alibi doesn't pan out. But I can't help you if you're gonna hide things from your lawyer. You're suspected of abducting a rival clan member, gouging his eyes out and dumping him in an alleyway. They'll lock you up and toss the key if we can't win this. Has that thought even crossed your mind? Or are all Yakuza just that fearless in the face of a life sentence? Fear has nothing to do with it. But like hell am I gonna beg you to save me. Then who would you beg? <laughs> None of your business. It's only a matter of time, Hamura. I'll figure out what you're hiding. Hey, Yagami! This video shows everything you need to see. My client, Hamura-san, drunkenly attacked this passerby on the night of the murder. Then, after the altercation, that same passerby watched Hamura-san walk into Sana Goten. Nobody came out of the building after that, until the train started in the morning, meaning the defendant was accounted for during the hours in question. The defense asserts that this video establishes a clear alibi, which can only be seen as proof of Hamura-san's innocence. Nonetheless, 
The defense's video is far too blurry to clearly identify either participant. There's no way to tell whether the man in the footage was the defendant or just a random pedestrian. <laughs> Thank you very much. In that case, the defense would like to call a witness to the stand. Sayasan, do you claim you're the person in this video? That someone assaulted you that night? Is that accurate? Yes. It is. Now tell us, this person who assaulted you, are they here in the courtroom? Witness? Is there a problem? I, um... Hmm? I must have... been mistaken. I am the one getting hit in the video. But as to who the other guy was... I can't say. Excuse me. Your Honor, a uh, recess, if you don't mind. In other words, Hamra must have handed him over to the real murderer. While Hamra was at the sauna making an alibi for himself, someone else was murdering Kume. So, you retract your earlier statement? Yes. My apologies. Your Honor, clearly this witness has no credibility. How does the defense respond? I admit, the witness was shaken up before, but I believe that's a perfectly understandable response. This is his first time in court, after all. For that short a time frame, you seem to have an awful lot of trouble with your customers. Huh? I'm not sure what you mean. Several of them have approached you in hopes of marriage, have they not? They come spending huge sums of cash, so you act like you're ready to seal the deal. You say whatever it takes to make them happy in the moment, but your story changes once things start to get real. How does the defense respond? I'd like to continue on the topic of credibility. Mind if I ask you a few questions, prosecutor? Go ahead. First, allow me to fast forward. As you can see, the original footage isn't exactly clear. I would understand if you would deny that the defendant was the man who punched our witness. And unfortunately for you, there's only one person who thinks the defendant is guilty. And that's you, prosecutor. The night Kume got murdered, Hamura was holed up in Sauna Go 10 till morning. The footage from the security camera, Hamra's alibi, Seiya's testimony, it all lined up. With a story that airtight, there's no chance he could have killed Kume. We find the defendant, Kyohei Hamra, innocent. I will now clarify the reasoning behind this decision. Defendant, please be seated. The judge was right. Hamura definitely didn't kill Kume. But he had to have been involved. Meanwhile, the real killer is still out there, hiding in the shadows of Kamurocho. But me? I'm not a lawyer. Not anymore. Meaning my search for the truth only ends when I say it does.
proving the suspect's alibi. But he can't shake the feeling that the true culprit is out there. Expensive tastes. Sort of out of your price range, huh? Why are you even here? What's going on? Maybe I should be asking you the same question, yeah? <laughs> Not that I need to. Why are you still looking into the Curie murders, Tuck? Keep your eyes to yourself, lest you want to lose them. Are we clear? You don't get to decide what I do. Don't go digging up dirt. Shintani went through a lot of work making those charges go away. <laughs> you want to keep playing detective? You ought to work out more. Well, I... got jumped earlier by four assholes wearing ski masks. Yeah? And why should I care? Well, I think... maybe you had something to do with it. I'm pretty sure that's the four of them right there. <laughs> I think you must have my boys confused. Right, Kengo? Yeah. No one likes a fucking liar! Oh! <laughs> Kanai-chan quit, packed her bags, and went back home. So stop looking for her. Why? I'm gonna let you off with a yellow card this time. <laughs> but only because the boss likes you so much. think you'd try to pull that, running off and telling an adult, like a fucking child. Oh, I just thought that the guy who actually runs the show would want to be able to keep tabs on his captain. He doesn't need to, so you keep your goddamn nose out of this shit, understand? Or do I need to spell it out? Yeah, I'm hearing you loud and clear. So... I guess we're done here. We're not done until I say so. don't really work on you, do they, Talk? Well, I guess you always have been a fighter. None of us thought you'd last a day in law school. But you sure showed us. Went to night classes, passed the bar. You say you're done, but a guy with balls like you doesn't give up. You fought for your lawyer's badge, but trash with a badge is still trash. And it's about time to take you out. Ozaki!
Just kidding. Hey, man. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Your ass ready to die? Huh? Oh, enough of this. You're dead! <sighs> this is some bullshit. You already went. Huh? It's only fair I take my turn. about the eyes? One bullet in each. Man the fuck up, Kengo! Who the hell? No way. We gotta go. This way! Get them both! Let's go! Matsugani family captain Kyohei Hamura is connected to the mole. Confirming his suspicions, Yagami's progress is impeded. The entire city is under Hamura's surveillance, and it went deeper than he knew. Alone and out of options, Yagami receives a little support. And don't show your face again until you've got him. Search the whole fucking city if you have to. What, the kid in the mask? Find him too, dumbass! Ah! All under Kaito-san's watch. The family lost 100 mil that day. But there was nothing Kaito-san could do with a gun shoved in his face. <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? Making sure there's some accountability around here, boss. As if that'll suddenly make things right. How exactly does this get our money back? Well, it won't, but it's a start. It's important to set an example. A hundred mil, huh? Sounds like that's one expensive finger. Talk. Why are you here? We were outside having a chat. The hell do you think you're doing? That pinky's big money. Thought I'd get a good, long look before it's gone forever. Shut it! <laughs> Pretty pathetic, isn't it? But Hamura, the damage was a hundred million. You really think one pinky can cover that? Huh. There's gonna be a whole lot more coming his way. More than this? Uh... What more can you do? Good question. Kaido-san. You're out. For good. There's no way. Kaito Anaki is... <sighs> Boss... You're... Okay with this? Begging him won't get you out of this. You see, boss? It's gotta be done. You know it's only fair. You should know. I already informed the main family of this. Did you know? You were awfully efficient about that. Thank you very much. <sighs> Atsugane-san, you really gonna go through with this? It's done, Tak. Kaito's out. From this point forward? Are you sure about that? I'm certain. Good news, Kaito-san. You get to keep your pinky. Huh? You don't get to decide that! 
Yakuza cut off their fingers to show accountability for the things they do. A civilian like Kaito-san has no reason to do that. The fuck do you think you are? With all due respect, your own boss just said Kaito's not Yakuza anymore. Captain. Back off. I'll do what I've gotta. Kaito-san. This is how it's gonna have to be. I'm not afraid. I'm Yakuza, dammit! Wait! Kaito! You're not Matsugani family or Yakuza anymore. You hear? I don't need your pinky, so just go. <laughs> Boss. Who's there? Come out! Homura... Is that him? It's Higashi, sir! Sorry to barge in on you like this. Higashi... What in the fuck are you doing here? Are you alone? I... Uh, I don't know if you realize, but that's the guy. That's Red Nose. He stole the hundred mil from our office. Sorry, Red Nose. This is nothing personal. <gasps> Captain? Hey, um, not really a good idea. Tell me, how'd you find out Red Nose was the thief? I... Uh, I... Well, I... Uh, What was I supposed to do? I told him everything. How I was in the office when the thief broke in and stole the money. How I bought police info from Ayabe and followed the trail to Red Nose. I kept talking, like my fucking life depended on it. Probably did, to be honest. Hmm. Real insightful. You did all that so you could clear your buddy Kaito's name, huh? Aren't you just the most loyal boy in town? Please, don't shoot. Whatever it is you want, I'm begging you, Captain! But, Captain, hold on. You sure? Huh, probably right. You want to stay alive. You show us some loyalty. Prove yourself once and for all. But how? How can I? Here's how. What? He wouldn't have had to die if you didn't show your sorry face. Not only that, he would have walked away ten million richer. Poor son of a bitch. His blood's on your hands, you know. No! <laughs> oh, wow. You scream like a fucking whore. Kind of a turn-on, to be honest. What are you so upset for? You're finally a real Yakuza now. But the whole thing was a setup. In Kamarocho, men are pulled into the criminal underworld's currents. But those that refuse to submit to its tides. <laughs> So, Higashi, tell me, you have a good reason you aren't doing what I asked? No, I don't, boss. 
You sure could use one with Tox still hanging around. It's time to start doing your damn job! <laughs> Hamura knows who the murderer is. He hid it from us the whole trial. And that innocent verdict made fools of us all. Go already, hurry up! Kaito-san. Oh! That's down! All right, let's go! Show it! Yes! There we go! Two two, even! <laughs> oh, I'm on fucking fire tonight! <laughs> Hell yeah, Captain! We're just getting started! <laughs> hey! Watch your fucking feet! Are you fucking serious? Get the fuck out of here! Such a small world, isn't it? You're not exactly an easy man to find. Ozaki! <laughs> Again, huh? Ready, talk? Done yet? Or do you want me to keep hitting you? Oh, fuck you. You hired the thief that stole the money from the office that day. It was all just a setup, wasn't it, Hamura? What, memories of looting you? But it's all water under the bridge, isn't it? Now that I can do this. What about the mole? Everything he does is under your command, huh? How many people has the mole murdered? All those Kyore guys? Shintani? No way those are the only ones. Shintani, before he got murdered, was so sure the Mole wasn't part of some Yakuza war. He wouldn't have said that without information to support it. And so, you had to silence him. Made the Mole use Ayabe's gun to hide the trail. Like hell I did. Shintani knew your secret. He knew the Mole murders were linked to the ADDC. All this comes right back to 89, doesn't it? Shove it up your ass! Now hands off, or I'm gonna fucking kill you! You seriously never listen, huh? Hamura. The center's director, Kido. Is he the one who's behind all this carnage? Is it Kido? Is that not right? <laughs> Start talking quick, asshole. Not feeling it, huh? Then how about I kill you right here? Kaito san! <laughs> Kido's not our guy. <laughs> And the phone call, when Shintani tried to reach the center. He wasn't trying to talk to Director Kido at all. It does seem we received a phone call from this Shintani-san you speak of. Do you know who he was calling? Dr. Shona. Hashiki too. He was trying to get information out of Shono until someone got to him. So the one I want... It's Shono, huh? Right, Hamura? 
Hey! Fire! Fire! I guess someone's got it out for us, huh, Talk? Captain! Kaito-san! was Hamura's personal underworld assassin. And the two set foot down a path of no return. What the... You should really see the look on your face right now, Kaito. Hamura... I gave you every chance to walk away from this. You just couldn't mind your own business, could you? And now you're gonna die for it. You pushed this one too far. Hamura. <laughs> Killing you is gonna feel real good. Is this really necessary? Don't make this harder than it needs to be, okay? Don't you think I've pulled enough of the family's weight already? Please don't. I don't care how much like sons these two are to you. Your loyalty is to the Matsugane family first. Besides, you know there's no other way. Are you out of your fucking mind? You need to lower the gun right now! No, Kaito! You shut your goddamn mouth! Kaito! Kaito son! Yagami son! Kaito son! No, don't! We have to get out of here! You fuck! Stop right there! Hamura. Surprised you decided to stick around. Not gonna try to run? Go fuck yourself, Doc. Let him go right now. Huh. What makes you think you have the upper hand here? Kaito-san. <laughs> hey, he sounds worried. Oh, oh. You piece of shit! You asked for it. <laughs> this time, let's finish it for real, asshole. <laughs> that all? Just need a minute, Kaito-san. Sure, what's the rush? This what you want? I'm gonna fucking kill you! Is it over, Yagami-san? <sighs> yeah. Glad you're okay. Come give me a hand. How do you feel, Kaito-san? <sighs> what, me? It was just a scratch. <sighs> I'm good on my own. <clears throat> Still acting tough with lead in your stomach? Who are you trying to impress? 
Yo, let me jump in too. Higashi. Matsugani-san too. My van's right outside. You two get him to a doctor. There's something I still need to do here. Got it. Guess I'm joining your little party. Not even the threat of death can stop you guys. <laughs> Took you long enough. <coughs> hey, <coughs> it's about time you give us some answers. I'm done wasting time on you, so just cooperate and it'll all be fine. <coughs> what, your murderer friend abandon you? Not much use if he won't come when you need help. Boss, listen. Things are gonna get ugly if I die here. Neither of you will survive the aftermath. It's not too late to put a stop to this. Just end this fucker and be done with it. And if I don't, the mole will kill us both. Is that what you're saying? Look, some people you can get away with betraying. And some people you can't. And which am I, I wonder? Boss. Pick your poison, Hamra. You die betraying the mole, or you die defending him. We're going to bring this murderer to justice. Now tell me where I can find him, and his identity. Answer me! I'd rather die. What? Don't play dumb with me. You think I'm gonna talk that easy? Pull the fucking trigger! If you say so. Huh. Didn't think you'd really stand your ground. We can't stay here. Who knows when his backup might arrive. Are the Matsugani still after us? Most likely. Embarrassing as that is to admit. Well, guess we gotta figure out how to make you talk. Huh? Luckily, I've got a place in mind. You heard of the Honmaruen Cabaret? It's a Kyore stronghold. What? I'm sure your former prey will be thrilled to see you. If they can't break you, I don't know what can. I doubt you'll last, though. It'll be damn interesting either way. Now come on, let's go. <laughs> Here he is, the man of the hour. Glad you could make it, Hamura. And you must be Patriarch Matsugane. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Though if you ask me, dojo leadership should be better at keeping their dogs chained up. Agreed. There is no excuse for how I acted. Shioya-san. We're gonna make Hamra tell us who the Mole is. Think you can keep us safe till then? <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. This is what Chairman Kajihiro wants. What? Once you're done with him, you give Hamra to us. <laughs> Gladly. What, no witty comeback? I think that's a first for you. Shut it! Details come at the cost of Kaito's blood. And each word that Hamura, the Matsugane family captain, speaks pulls back the veil a little further. Get your fucking hands off me!
<laughs> this is as good a spot as any. You need any instruments, you just ask me. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that. Now, I think it's about time we got some answers. And you're gonna give them to us. Should we take it from the top? First off, the one in control of all this is Shono, the 89 researcher. How long have you been working for him? Murdering for him? I already have a pretty good idea. How about I guess? <laughs> First time you used the mole was... for Hashki the vice director of the ADDC. He got beat to death six months ago, as you well know. <laughs> Hashki had a secret deal with Chairman Kajihira. Together, they were gonna poke holes in this 89 business and bring the ADDC to its knees. But Shono, the researcher in charge of the drug, had a big secret he needed to keep hidden. Hashki's little investigation posed a big problem. That is, until he got beaten down in the back streets of Kamarocho. Hashki was fatally wounded by the mole and survived for another three weeks. That kept suspicion off Shono and left practically no evidence. Only the most skilled killer could pull something like that off. In other words, the assassin you and Shono have been using. <laughs> Think you struck a nerve. You're a real crack detective, Yagami. You know, I personally funded his time at law school. He never would have passed the bar without me. No shit? I'd say you made a good investment. Paying off in spades. Uh, do you mind? I'm kinda in the middle of something here. Sorry. Sorry. So. Where's your friend? No clue. But he'll be here soon enough. All three of you are dead where you stand. He says the mole's on his way here. Oh, is he now? I'd love to have a chat with the lad. Keep dreaming, pal. He'd wipe the floor with your backcountry ass. Enough, Hamura. Tell us who the mole is and how you started working with him. Have those instruments handy? Coming right up! All right, all right, I'll talk. That's almost a shame. I like when it's tool time. Now, who is the Mole? At first, he was just an informant feeding off the chaos that breeds in Camarocho like flies. An informant? Yep. And he was trained by one of the best in the business. Rose to prominence after the cops busted his mentor. And that made the Mole the top guy in the biz. One of those situations where the student surpassed the master. Nobody could beat his intel. Could get his hands on anything you needed to. Guns, forged documents, you name it. Before long, we'd formed a nice little partnership. Started making a name for ourselves. Thinking about it, it's been about 20 years now. And? Keep talking, or it's tools. Once I got the gig as captain of the Matsugane family, I started relying on him even more. Let me tell you, the guy could dispose of a corpse like it was the easiest damn thing in the world. He had nerves of steel. And he's never even sworn up. Flash forward to a couple years ago, he said he was ready to start doing hits. That's when my... <laughs> big chance finally came. Honestly, I wasn't that big on the whole murder thing. But the dangerous shit's what really brings in the cash. 
So, I started touting his services around the darker side of Kamaroto. <laughs> Felt like I added a new dish to my menu. This is no time for jokes, you fool. What, you don't approve of my methods? This city will swallow you whole if you don't got that cash. And protecting the family name doesn't come cheap. <sighs> you think Kaido could have toughed it out with all his swagger? We'd have vanished by now. But with enough money, who knows? We could have rode it to the top of the Tojo clan. Wasn't that always part of the dream, boss? It was, yes. But not anymore. Uh, that's so. <laughs> that's funny. Because I spent my entire life chasing that dream for you! The goal you fucking told me to strive for! Let's get back on topic, shall we? Tell me this. You started shopping the mole services around. What then? What happened? <sighs> Wasn't long till we got our first hit. Our mark was Hoshki, vice director of the ADDC. And Shono's the one who hired you? So I heard. He always contacted me through someone else. Guy by the name of Ishimatsu. Short little guy. Always had this creepy fucking smile on his face. At the time, we all thought this was gonna be a one off. Didn't do much prying, you know. Never even knew why they wanted the guy dead. We just took the 10 mil and did what we were asked. They wanted him to die discreetly, though, right? Pretty much. So he did. Ishimatsu took a real shine to us after that. A few months later, he was back with another job. And that was? Well, gathering test subjects for their 89 experiments and disposing of the bodies. So you just want me to abduct these Kyori guys? You don't want them dead? That is correct. And your reward is a hundred million yen each. <laughs> Real funny. Last time it was ten for a hit job. Why give us so much more to kidnap a few guys? <laughs> funny you should ask that. It could very well end up being more than just a few guys. We're not quite sure how many we might want. Perhaps just one. Or maybe even ten might not be satisfactory. Ten, huh? The key point is, we expect this to be a long-term partnership. Given the sensitive nature of this task, naturally we expect the utmost secrecy. I sincerely hope this 100 million conveys the importance of that. What about the Kyori guys? What happens to them, huh? It's unfortunately likely that they'll end up dead. Excuse me if this is presumptuous, but considering the amount I'm offering, would that also cover the body disposal? Or would that, uh, cost extra? Drop the fucking act, asshole! <sighs> Where are you getting that kind of money, huh? A hundred mil just to kill one goddamn Yakuza? <laughs> I actually never said you needed to kill anyone. I only requested that you bring them to us. And then, you would just dispose of the evidence. I don't see where this is going. You think the Yakuza are your tool? You don't understand. My only role is delivering the message. My employer, he's the root of all of this. And... You have no idea how many billions of yen he has to ensure his objectives are achieved. What? If you pull that trigger right now, who knows how decisive the retribution might be. Those billions could instead be shifted toward erasing you. What was that? Just think about it. 
How long will you be able to survive? Use your head, Captain Hamura. Hmm. There's no escape. Once you agreed to meet with me today, you all but guaranteed your participation and your compliance. So I strongly suggest you put the gun away. Does that make sense? <clears throat> you guys are seriously that big, huh? Tell me more. Talk. Allow me to answer your question. It's true that we have access to vast amounts of money, yes. But we're not the violent organization you think we are. Oh yeah? Who are you? Ishimatsu Superior. The name's Ichinose. The only reason I'm choosing to show you my face is because I've decided to trust you. And because I want you to understand how far we're willing to go to bring our plan to fruition. My name's Shono, Captain. I'm currently researching a brand new drug called AD-9. A drug that could very well save Japan. Or, or, or maybe even the world, if... A new drug, huh? Where do I come in? The reality of the situation is, we are under intense pressure to complete our work on AD-9 expediently. To that end, Hamura-san. We'd like to ask for your assistance. Ichinose. So the Ministry of Health is in on this too. It goes all the way up. Maybe it does. Are you familiar with the Medical Institute? Yeah. It's home to the ADDC. It makes a comfy place for all the health ministry execs to go retire. Well, it just so happens that the guy who founded it 20 years ago was none other than Ichinose. He rode that success all the way up to vice minister. In other words, his whole legacy's riding on the ADDC. AD9's gotta come out on top for him to stay on top. And he's willing to murder to make sure that happens? Yep. Ichinose is not the only one profiting, either. There are tons of parties involved, all being promised this much cash or that favor. If people have to die for AD-9 to succeed, so be it. Here's a question. Why'd you go after Kyori guys for the experiments? Just following Shono's orders. Shono told you to? Yep. He said there was a chance of the subject dying when we gave him the AD-9. Now if regular old civilians started disappearing, that'd make the news in no time. But nobody'd notice a few missing Yakuza during a turf war. Only natural there'd be some casualties, yeah? I guess so. That wasn't the only reason, though. Shono said <laughs> he didn't want to perform dangerous experiments on innocent civilians. And what, these Yakuza deserve this somehow? The Kajihira group was the one trying to shut down the ADDC to begin with. And the Kyore were Kajihira's lapdogs. A couple of dead thugs didn't weigh on him too much. But don't shoot the messenger. Shono's the one who said it. You'll keep talking if you know what's good for you. Unless you want to go back to the hard way, I'm all for it. What else could you possibly want to know? Actually, I've got one more thing. Oh yeah? You made it sound earlier like you weren't that involved in the killings. But that's not the whole truth, is it? In fact, I have something that shows you actively helped carry out the Kyore killings. Take a look at this. Check this out. Look familiar? It's camera footage of you abducting Kume. 
So tell me, why'd you take the fall? They even got your face on tape. You're not usually that sloppy. <laughs> Answer me. That was right after we axed two Curie guys, one after another. They started catching on. Wouldn't go around town alone anymore. Keep going. When your mark's that on guard, nobody's laying a hand on him. Not even a trained assassin. So the mole needed a hand. Someone he could trust to get the ball rolling. And that someone was me. So what happened after you left Amor? My guy took Kume out the back. Loaded him in the trunk of a car. Took him to Shono. Just like all the other 89 tests. To the ADDC? No, not the center. I'm not sure where it is exactly. Some place Shono and the Mole set up. So they carried out their human experiments in some kind of secret lab? Suppose they did. Then why'd they need to gouge the eyes out? No clue. He never told me. Maybe he wanted to make it look like a Yakuza killing. <laughs> Maybe the mole's just into some sick shit. Next up, Shintani. He had nothing to do with the Kyore clan, but you guys still used him as an AD9 test subject. Or was there some other reason you had him killed? Shintani's death. That was my fault. Huh? When we took care of Kume, I was the one on the hook for it. Let me tell you, ending up in the slammer for a murder you didn't do is scary shit. Made me think, wouldn't hurt to have some insurance. Insurance? Talked to Shintani before the trial, and told him this. If the pieces fall into place and I hang for this, look into Shono at the ADDC. So you told him about the deal you made with Ichinose? Not exactly. Shono was the only name I mentioned. But if anyone found out I spilled the beans to Shintani, well... I'd be betraying the cause. So I told the bastard, only go digging if shit really hits the fan. Why did he call Shono if he knew it was that important to you? Why'd he start digging it up? Beats me. Got a pretty good theory, though. You wanna hear? Yeah, do tell. I guess he didn't want to let you hog all the glory. Huh? He might have won my trial, but you're the one who found the key evidence. Shintani got recognition, sure, but it was only by association. Nobody said it, but they all knew. You did the real work. But even then, you didn't stop trying to show up the poor guy. Right when the trial came to a close, there you were, hunting the real killer down. How do you think Shintani felt, sitting around waiting for you to stumble onto the truth? <laughs> Can't imagine he was sleeping well. <laughs> you might as well let this mole shit go. Think this is some kind of Yakuza pissing contest, do you? Come on. The mole is way bigger than you know. Shintani wanted to find the truth before you did. Wanted to earn his time in the sun. And that's why he called the ADDC? To investigate the killings himself? That's my theory. Can't back it up, though. Either way, the end result was the same. Ichinose found out Shintani was trying to get in touch with Shono. Signed his own death sentence. I'm sure it was plain as day that I was the guy who put him on the right trail. So, I had no choice but to silence Shintani. I even paid for the job out of my own pocket. And when it came to setting up a fall guy, we picked Ayabe. First, we got his gun. The Mole was the one who used it to kill Shintani. 
He replaced the one bullet he fired, got rid of any traces that he used it, and put it back in Ayabe's holster. That meant that the bullet found in the body would have the rifling marks from his gun. Which meant it was an unshakable fact that Shintani was shot with Ayabe's weapon. Face it, Ayabe's alibi isn't gonna hold water. The guy doesn't even remember who attacked him? Right. Nobody will buy that. Never. Fair enough. Although, what if we caught the mole and then forced you to testify in the trial? Wrong. It smells like something's burning. What? <laughs> My boys must have finally decided to show up. You really want to meet the mole? Now's your chance. Atsugani son, we gotta go. You too. Get up. I'm gonna go ahead and suggest you let me walk away, boss. If I give the order, the family will fall back. At least then you'd live. Isn't that what you want? That's enough! If this Ministry of Health business is true, you're nothing more than a pawn to them. From where they stand, I'm sure you can be replaced. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. You're an idiot, Hamura. Huh? Come on. It's the Matsugane. They went and started a fire downstairs. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Captain! Oh, Marase. How many they got? Captain! That's it, they're so fucking dead! Hey, how did you pull off turning my family into goddamn terrorists? Gotta go, Matsugane-san. Right. Leave Hamura to me.
Is that the mole? Don't! Karoiwa. Now you know the truth. Karoiwa is the one you want! What? Betrayed by his inner circle, Hamura becomes a target himself. So he reveals to Yagami the Mole's true identity. He is Kamarocho's organized crime division detective. Wait! Get back here! Stop. What's going on? Hey, what the hell was that? He's got a black raincoat. Who are you? <sighs> Who are you? What the... Captain 
Hamura? The hell are you doing here? Sorry sight, wasn't it? Huh? Matsugane's funeral. They had to go and use HQ's gigantic hall. Made it look like barely anyone even bothered to show up. Wish I could have gone and lit some incense. But if I did, Kuroiwa would have taken me out. Yeah? Then what are you doing here? Talk, you found Shono's lab, right? Good job. Those bastards never wanted to tell me where it was. Didn't think you could do it. Maybe. But Ichinose is covering the whole damn thing up. <laughs> Out of options, huh? I thought giving up wasn't your style. Here's the deal. I got something for you. What? Gotta settle accounts. What accounts? Never mind. But holding on to this does nothing for me. So, I want to help you out here, just this once. For the boss, give him justice. If there was any justice, I'd have gotten shot. But the boss paid the price instead. Fucked up, yeah? None of this was his fault. I already lost my chance. You, on the other hand, still may have one. Hamura. This is it. You're the boss's only shot now. Put an end to this. Once and for all. I think you'll like what you find on here. This is decisive evidence. It'll nail Ichinose. Your Honor, I offer the data I received into evidence. Take a listen to this. Did you tell someone about Shono? That lawyer, Shintani. Word has it, he just called the ADDC. Well, uh, yeah, I might have said something, but it's fine. Shintani will keep quiet if I tell him to. How can you be so naive? This is unacceptable. You must deal with this Hamura-san immediately. Do what needs to be done. Have Kuroiwa-san handle the dirty details. It'll cost you another hundred mil. This mistake was yours and yours alone. Don't anger me further. <laughs> Not who you expected? Witness, who is speaking in this recording? I'm one of them. The other is Vice Minister Ichinose here. Without a doubt. Yes. Kido's up next, right after my testimony. What? The doctor sides with whoever he thinks will win. And look at that. Guess he thinks you're on the losing side. 